So we have a very powerful and very well experienced uh, panelist we have today with us. And to start with, uh, so let me introduce uh, why we have chosen the topic like going importance of endpoint security. So that thing is endpoint security has evolved from traditional antivirus software to providing comprehensive protection from sophisticated malware and evolving zero day at threats. Endpoint security systems protect these endpoints on a network or in the cloud from cyber security threats. If a device is connected to a network, it is considered as an endpoint. With the growing popularity of BYOD, bring your own device and IoT, the number of individual devices connected to an organization's network can quickly reach into tens to thousands, hundreds to thousands. Organizations of all sizes are at risk from nations, hacktivists, organized crime, and malicious and accidental insider threats. Endpoint security is often seen as cyber security's front line and represents one of the most, this is the first places organizations look to secure their enterprise network. On this backdrop, I'd like to start the question, like I think uh, two minutes for the question is enough, I think, Kapil? Yeah, fine. So, I have a question to Mr. Vijay Sethi. Adoption of new technology will breed novel threats from more innovative threat actors. What is your take on it? Absolutely, Deepak. Thank you very much for inviting me and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Adoption of new technologies is going to change uh, the entire threat landscape of uh, all the organizations, especially at the endpoint level. So when we talk about uh, new technologies, for example, IoT, IoT devices, all those uh, sensors, they are also endpoints. Earlier, our thought process was that endpoint is just a PC laptop. Uh, now the endpoints as such have increased and many of them would be vulnerable. So that uh, creates an issue in a major way. The second is, uh, if I look at one more uh, new technology which is kind of uh, impacting the world in a big way, positively, negatively, we can discuss that out, which is chat GPT and uh, AI ML and those kind of things. Again, it's really going to change the entire impact on end user security in a big way. You can go into a chat GPT and just write a code uh, that give me a code as to how to do a phishing or do a ransomware attack or any such thing. That's the second piece. And third, I will just, just put the third thing is that uh, with this entire uh, work from home today and people trying to explore a lot of stuff, uh, the reality is that many of us are using uh, devices which are not fully patched. And that in itself is creating a major issue because you are not able to patch and that's what, uh, it's not just you that you are using the new technologies. Reality is all the hackers are using the same AI, ML and many other stuff. And they can use many of those technologies so that uh, new technologies can work both ways. While it can help the organization, it is also helping the hackers and that's creating its own set of issues. Dr. DeCosta, do you agree with uh, what Mr. Vijay said he has told? I think uh, what he says is absolutely right because uh, the world is becoming more smaller and smaller. People are getting connected to the cyberspace. In fact, uh, in the last, uh, you know, in the last uh, one year, we saw the people who are getting connected to the cyberspace has been the highest. In fact, uh, you almost have about 490 crore people today who are connected on the cyberspace and out of which 120 crore people just got connected in the last one year. So when you talk about this, people getting connected to the cyberspace, one of them is the corporates, the industries. And uh, with the world becoming smaller, you require an endpoint end security, which is of extreme, extreme high importance because the vulnerabilities have increased. And to protect them, I go with what he aptly said that uh, we do require a security a security which is a proven security, just not a I watch security, I have a compliance in place, that doesn't mean that your security procedures are been properly done and properly implemented. Dr. Meher, uh, you have, must have a different experience I can find. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever my uh, DAX people, they have spoken, it is absolutely right. And uh, what they are saying, uh, really they vulnerability in every sense. Uh, but in a uh, big organizations, what we face the problems that uh, the major vulnerability it comes from the end point, and that have to be understand. And 
just uh, of the text I was discussing with him that uh, why not the uh, some uh, education program should start from a school level so that that can we get award. Uh, you, uh, recently, uh, just uh, just uh, uh, the DAX person has spoken, uh, Dr. Rishuya. He has spoken that uh, we have a lot of, means millions of people, they are using the uh, internet through their mobiles. And more than 80% mobile is not been secured. And and that 80% also, they are doing the, all the major transactions in the mobiles. So that awareness is required to the society. In the organizational level, what I'm talking about it, they also, at least the user's level, whether it's a computer educated person or whether it's a general users, they're supposed to be aware that what kind of security is supposed to be in their systems, whether it's a mobile, whether it's a desktop, whether it's a laptop, whether it is a IoT device. Uh, in the healthcare sectors, IOMT, just a, it is a one type of IoT device, Internet of Medical Things, Majority of machines are connected in IoT de uh, IOMT device, and it generates a lot of data, your laboratory, uh, laboratory data, your imaging data of the healthcare, and continuous process, and it is very easy to hack it. So, 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 so what it happens, we supposed to have a right kind of solution of endpoint or uh, MDR or XDR, everything supposed to be in place and continuously be monitor also. It is not required that you, it is everything in place and it, it can be solved your problems, no. You have to continuously monitor. Every time so you have to be watchful. Is there any malicious attack is there or they are trying it? Because the attack is not in single day. It has, it is to be available in your system for months and they are observing your, all the activities and they find a day when it is to be attacked and what to be attacked. You are right, Dr. So, yeah. Meher, uh, we know that you have a better experience, uh, yeah. so there are so many things are happening. Yeah. So on this backdrop, if we want any other panelists to evaluate, or other panelists said. Okay, if not, I'll go to next question. As the endpoint landscape is evolving and business, small, medium and large are the targets of cyber attacks. The risk posed by endpoints and their sensitive data are ongoing cybersecurity challenge. What are your suggestions towards protecting the endpoints? I'll ask this question to Naveen. Thank you, Deepak ji. Uh, first of all, the views are mine as a disclaimer and not my company's. That gives me a liberty to speak uh, okay. respectively as the, as the domain is getting more complex. But I think the fundamental of cybersecurity still lies around people, process, and technology. Everything revolves around that. And I think what topic we are to, uh, discussing here is endpoint security. And endpoint security where data is the oil and apart from that user is the asset. In this hybrid world where networks are borderless and your users are you know, basically not on the company devices but on their own handled devices or on their BYOD devices. I think this control vector becomes very important. Tools are there. There are many OEMs in our industry, we provide the tool and as the imminent panelists talked about that today cyber security has become a notch ahead where these hackers are using uh, AI ML technologies to probably detect. Let me tell you even the detection technologies have gone beyond signatures and they are also using certain uh, you know, uh, investigative technologies like EDR and all on the endpoint to detect those. But having said that, some basic hygiene in terms of people, because many of us use BYOD devices, but don't put any antivirus software on that. And today, these devices have increased. Even if we try to probably segment them into a managed and unmanaged devices, you still need to have a continuous watch wherever an end user is coming from, what type of data, what posture does he carry, what access is he making, so that zero trust principle of the endpoint has to be put into perspective whether of whichever segment or you know industry that user comes from so that's my two cents okay you have made the disclaimer also that's yeah. good uh, so now we'll ask the response from mr dinesh barija what did you take on it dinesh i think uh, we are getting tough, we are getting stuck in the technology domain nobody thought about the privacy of the end user and and that law may not be applicable or you know available in the country but there are geographies where you may have trouble Mike putting in, pass, yeah. there, there are geographies where you may have trouble using an, an endpoint uh, technology to you know, see what the person is doing 
that is one. The second thing is this, and like the panelists have said already, is that technology, new technology is coming in, and you do need to, you know, put a control on that to know what's happening and what's not happening, what's moving in, what's moving out. But again, there's one more area that is handhelds. There are so many companies, medical, healthcare, or even uh, insurance or whatever, where healthcare, the professionals are carrying handhelds into the field, collecting data, bringing it back. It happened in the Aadhaar also, and yeah. it's still happening, right? Yes. There are thousands and uh, lakhs of uh, endpoints which are roaming around. What is lost, what is stolen, or what is compromised, we don't know. There's no, there's practically no, I would say, control on that area. We may say that, even Aadhaar may say that, yes, we have control, but uh, how strong is that is, again, is a separate issue altogether. So, yes, new technologies, yes, absolutely necessary. Handhelds are necessary to go out in the field and to, you know, reach out to the official people. But before we do that, we need to do a risk assessment. We need to understand what are the risks over there and put that in place. So that, that basically is my takeaway. Yeah. So anyone want, in the panel want to evaluate what Naveen and Mr. Dinesh has spoken? Yes. I'll just add. Uh, Sir, you will not put any disclaimer. No, no I okay. don't have any disclaimer. Earlier also I never had any disclaimer. Okay, so fine. So I'll just add two or three very simple things that, and to answer your questions directly as to what uh, people should be doing from end user and user endpoint security perspective. Number one, the biggest threat is that uh, most of these are not patched. So whether it is just the operating system or all the applications, Microsoft Office, A, B, C, X, Y, Z. So you need to ensure that uh, all those applications are patched. If those are not patched, you will be as vulnerable. Whatever. The second uh, simple thing that you need to do is to ensure. Uh, that your system has encryption along with, of course, uh, a password which could be a very stronger password. Uh, there's a second thing uh, that you need to do so that. And third is on the people part, you spoke about people process uh, technology, is that the end user has to be aware that if he or she sees that there's something, some behavior which is happening on your uh, device, please take care of that. If you have not restarted your either laptop or uh, mobile phone for quite some time, chances are that there could be few things which could be lying in the cache over there which could actually create more problems uh, later. So if you just do these three simple things, I think half the battle is already won. Yeah. So Dr. Dekos, do you want to add? Then yeah. I will come to Naveen again. Huh? Yeah. Okay. I just want yeah. to have, you know, because we have a lot of disclaimers. Yes. Let me tell you this opinion we are putting into a public domain. Yes. So nothing will be taken as a gospel truth. So you can be rest assured, you know. That's the one part of it. And it's a hearsay evidence. It's our opinion point of view. Accepted or not accepted, it depends upon the person who takes it. Yeah? And point number two, what I would just like to you know, just um, collaborate with what the other of my learned panelists say. And that is the, you know, when you talk about the endpoint security, one of the aspects which is very important is the assessment of the system. Because this is something which is lacking. And once we assess the system, we will get what are the vulnerabilities or the weak points. And based on that, we should have a proper uh, the contingency plan, the mitigation plans. I think if we do all this particular process in place, then I believe that we'll have a better, far, reliable world to stay in this present world. Wonderful. Kapil, you want to add something? Yeah? Th that's a very interesting point, endpoint security, wherein like... Uh, Everyone has a sales force and everyone has a, you know, office people, finance people, and every data is very important. And if you look at the behavior of the users, they want different type of accesses as well. I mean, sometimes despite having, I'm assuming, it, let's say you have a best of the best MTR, MDR, XDR tools, but still you have to change the behavior of those protections as per their work required. because their ways are working are different because they need a USB access, they need a full internet access. And uh, other side is hackers are very smart because they are surfacing, they are basically checking out to you what behavior you are basically performing. And now these days the hackers, what they are doing is they are targeting endpoint because they are, that's the most low hanging fruit. The moment you are having the full access, despite having all those uh, tool installed. They are coming with the new innovations, new ransoms, ransomware, malware, which are not exist anywhere in the world, right? Like, uh, let's take example, 
total virus is a one of the site where like all the signatures of uh, ransom, malware, trojans are available. So if world may anything has happened, so people are reporting there. But these hackers are so smart, they are basically buying that time. They are creating a new signature and they are injecting that signature in your system, which are vulnerable, which are yes. having full access. And they're executing it. The best part of having these kind of endpoint, I mean, the, which are having AI enable, in case if anybody tries to fiddle with your network or endpoint, the moment it is, because every malware has a behavior, a pattern, which is AI ML reads it, let's say there is a lateral movement. One system to the other system they are trying to contact or CNC they are trying to establish. So immediately it reads that and it blocks immediately. Right? So having endpoint security is very, very important. Please do not ignore it because we, the, the hackers are way beyond, way beyond. And they will not basically wait for to basically old type of, you know, uh, antivirus to be installed, which are signature based and then signature will be uh, get updated. You need a very smart system which can basically stop. So there are two ways. It's either you can basically do the post-mortem later or you have to be take the prevention right there itself. So it, there are two scenarios where the pre and post. Pre is your zero day attack where you can basically zero down the surface right there. And in case, let's say you don't have zero down, uh, uh, zero trust. So what you can do is you can basically wait something to script. Uh, they have to perform some script. Then you read it, stop it. So there are two ways of it. I mean, that's your basically depends on your pocket, your budget, your roadmap, what you have created all together. It is based on that actually. Good, good. So Dr. Meher, uh, you want to share your experience? Uh, yeah, uh, basically uh, the endpoint security system is not only the one. Your operating system is, has to be always uh, operated. Your, uh, 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 your SS, your policy, what you, what you have defined it in the organization, that has to be matched with the whole system. Whole system means your endpoint as well as your networking, your, your databases, which, is, uh, which you have to assess it from the endpoints. Uh, uh, persons, let's say one uh, uh, one uh, one point persons. Uh, we have given access to one port has to open for him to access the the, uh, the database, which has to be do some uh, activities. In the meantime, if that node has been compromised, means that attacks has to happen immediately. <laughs> so one has to be very careful. If you are giving any access, any um, high level access to the databases or your programs or APIs, in that cases we have to be more careful. Thank Good. You. Naveen, uh, do you think all the points you have raised it is correct or you want to add some more points? Well, I think uh, the eminent panelists have covered most of the points uh, and I think Sethi have highlighted that uh, one is patching, again endorsed very well, that first basically your endpoints need to be patched well. Secondly, endpoints, endpoint protection has moved away from EPP, endpoint protection to EDR, which is detection and response. That's also the panelists have highlighted that behavior based analysis is the new game to actually catch the adversaries, correct? Yeah. And also, uh, I think uh, zero trust, where you want to ensure that if the behavior of the user or the machine or the endpoint changes, you basically quarantine the user, which is automated which is EDR, R is, stands for response somewhere. So that's how I think the game is changing. Irrespective of which size of organization you are, there are tools very much available to help you achieve that is what I can say. Good, so very good, very good. And uh, it's good that uh, our, uh, some delegates uh, in the hall, they also send some question to ask the panelist, okay? So I will take the question. As the threat landscape is becoming more complicated, and business of all sides can be targeted for cyber attacks. What do advise to your peer friends to protect from attacks? I'll start with uh, Kapil. So, uh, see, this is very 
common now these days because uh, all the organization are either targeted and they have been targeted and people are aware not aware there are different scenarios but uh, i would say uh, because i have been experienced so many attacks uh, in my past stint like i have seen it one of the thing uh, as a learning i can share uh, there are three practices where you have to keep reviewing your access rights uh, that is very much important and you have to take care of about your servers uh, uh, server is another end point actually yes right so generally uh, generally people uh, do different type of provisioning there but i for me it is always it's a end point which is uh, low hanging fruit which is available on a cloud and anyone can easily scan it the moment they can scan and they can basically inject something inside so probably you will lose the data that's the first thing what yep. you so you have to take care of your servers wherein like first of all you have to secure nobody can scan you from the outside it and uh, your your ports has to be basically because so many developers they are every time keep doing the changes and they are deploying it there so you have to check that and ensure that if any port is opened there let's say generic port 80 or 8080 that kind of port should not be open it so some tool either you have to use it some intelligence you have to use it or you have a policy you have to build it which can basically at least tell you which are the ports are open right now can be accessed because uh, hackers keep checking and from there they can enter and they can inject any malware inside that and now these days the game is different because the moment they gain some access they don't perform any script right there actually they keep wait and watch you and they keep reconning what you are doing it actually and after 6 months when they will have complete idea or 7 month they will wait there it's called supply chain basically they executed the ransom there yeah and last thing i want to comment there is a very small mistake what you uh, generally people do there is a power shell this is a very well known term we have to basically block from end point from server everywhere until unless it is not required to use by any developer don't open it because let's say i'm a i'm a, i have injected a malware or ransomware so i need a script to run so powershell is one of the source where they have to basically gain the access and run these scripts so you have to block it so that like uh, that's why mtr and uh, mdr things they are alerting you faster and then you are taking actions so these are a few good. learnings i can share right away very good nice uh, update anyone in the panel they want to add what kapil said anyway uh, um, basically uh, what i uh, i suggest uh, time to time you do the it security audit so uh, so because the, the new threats are coming up you are going for different technology different applications your uh, api is uh, this is not only the uh, uh, your endpoint security system your application has to has to be also secured your network has to be secure your database has to be secure the server has to be secured so so everything it, it is in the one line so the, uh, the vulnerability has come up if you do a uh, 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 it audit then you will know that uh, the where is the threat is there this is my right. suggestion yeah dr de costa yeah. just one point to add because we had technical we had audit just want to add one point is that uh, we have some you know the government coming up with new guidelines you know these uh, guidelines have to be properly followed understood and implemented till the time we don't understand from a legal perspective that what damages it can cause we will be still you know reluctant to have proper practices in place i think that it's not a fear that has to be injected but we should also be aware that any type of a uh, threats do organize in an organization there could be a legal complications which may come and that legal complications once it has been properly understood i believe that most of these threats could be minimized or they could be eradicated in a one line i would say prevention is better than cure okay anyone want to add 
If not, uh, you want to add something, or Dinesh ji? Just add one thing over here, is that we talked about BYOD earlier, or work from home, and uh, so I also mentioned uh, about the need for end user to be aware that something is going wrong, raise a red flag. Okay, now the problem which is what, is that uh, we are all working hybrid, Somebody is working from home, somebody is working from somewhere else, somebody is working from, from Starbucks or wherever. Can you right? take the mic? Huh? So, yeah. so, the end point or the end user has to be careful about the network which he or she is using, has to be careful about the USB port which he or she is using to charge his or her phone, has to be careful to understand what's happening, has to be careful when you take your end point home and your child plays with it or you give it or you it is used for some other family work. No, you can bring anything into the into the machine at that time, and uh, of course awareness is is paramount. Okay. Paramount. I must say there's no, I would say excuse, not to do awareness regularly. Companies are doing it, yes, but they do it once a year. It doesn't make any sense at all. If once in a year I tell you कि ये पानी नहीं पीना, तो you'll forget 12 months later or 11 months later. ये पानी खराब है. Simple thing like that. Okay. But uh, it has this thing has to be drilled into the people's mind day in and day out. And but like you said, it's not about teaching them; it's about sensitizing them. Okay, this can go wrong. If something goes wrong, it is not just the company; it is your job also which will go. Okay. Uh, that okay. is the only way the message can go across. So we have a one-minute challenge. How you can respond to the question? Can you let me know how you can secure your business in the Chat GPT era? where marketing people want to do for AI based approach? I will start with Naveen. It's a difficult question, right? Well, uh, is it in the context of the endpoint or is it in the context of the endpoint? Endpoint. Yeah. Achha. Well, endpoint and uh, chat GPT, I, I, I don't know how is the great relation to it, but uh, uh, contextually they are very quite different, chat GPT from an endpoint. But let me tell you one fact is that the number of endpoints today are more than the people, the human race as such. Yes. Uh, I think we again endorsed many things here uh, and to make things a bit simpler, as post pandemic, the number of agents on our endpoints have increased. And if we try to even scare the end, end user that you will compliance, you will have other issues, aayenge, to <laughs> he may stop using the uh, system and maybe use his own personal you know stuff in terms or maybe you know otherwise the productivity can go down we can't even afford that so i think cyber security has to or tools have to make it easier uh, uh, well chat gpt is also related to either making technology easy to use so i can relate it that way yeah. that today consolidation of endpoint security agents is a major factor so the threat will not come from a file which is copied to the system it may also come from browsing the internet it may also come from a dns based attack so my point perspective is that try to look at something which is more consolidated, which is easy to adopt and which is not heavy on the user usage also. And uh, it's ultimately on the IT. That's why there are two types of systems, managed and unmanaged. True. Unmanaged switches, unmanaged systems can have a disclaimer like compliance and governance, we are out of it and your access is limited to things. Managed systems, the ownership is of the organization, of the CISO, of the security team to ensure that there is compliance and negotiation. True. That's my point. Yeah, you are right. Kapil, uh, can you share your uh, thought, please? Uh, so it's a very interesting because, as you mentioned, like <laughs> marketing people, they are looking for a lot of you know AI-based tools. That's very right because everyone is basically increase the digital footprint, and uh, for for increasing digital footprint, they need lot of lot of you know data churn around in a desktop or laptop, wherein most lowest level of people they are working, they don't have sense of it, what data they are using it, but they are using that. Now, uh, uh, there is a correlation uh, with the chat GTP because chat GTP allows you to basically uh, recon what you are doing it. Let's say I'm, I'm a user wherein like I don't have any idea, I will basically request, which is in chat GPT terms called prompter. Right, you have to prompt a question. You go to the chat GTP and prompt a question wherein, let's say, I like to hack my data, wherein I am having the endpoint available. And you will get the immediately solution like this is the way you can breach it or bypass it. Okay, True. so that's what is that's why I'm saying is see, 
AI is a very dangerous thing. If you're not handling, then it will be a, a big havoc. I mean, chat GTP is giving you a opportunity, a, a end user, end user which is not a literate of IT, and getting a three solution, three advice through chat GTP. Okay, this is the way you can breach and you can pass bypass. And in the world, there is a no tool which can give you 100% protection. Right? It can tell you three ways, okay, go to the off the proxy and look for this particular EXE and stop it. And they are having full marketing, guys are having full access, they can stop that EXE and they can bypass it and they can send the data in a second. A guy which is not the IT guy. Right? That, that's what I'm saying is, handling AI is not that easy. So we have to have write a policy which can be categorized the keyword. So means if you're bringing one site chat GTP, you have to endpoint policy, you have to tune it off. That's what is the correlation is. You're right. Anyone want to add uh, what uh, Naveen and Kapil said? There is a risk and of course, like every other tool, you know, it has, it's a knife. You can use it to kill, you can use it to chop vegetables. You know, so it's, but at the end point, you know, when you talk of risk over there or somebody asking for it or marketing says we need it, yes, they can use it to generate very good uh, copywriting and messages, yes. But like uh, nefarious uses, very easy. I can, uh, you know, take about 10 minutes to write something, to get something written and uh, weapon, weaponize a, a Word document or an Excel document or whatever and mail it out and nobody would ever know. So even if I don't have my PowerShell or whatever running on my machine, or I don't have admin, admin rights, I can still do it. Or I can get absolute uh, help right from top to bottom, step-wise, and breach whatever. So if I'm a disgruntled employee, there is a lot of trouble or there's a lot of risk for the company. But uh, having said that, you do need to tweak your policies right away. And policies, you know, like I said in the morning, whether it policy is not just at our level, okay, we would go and do it, but national level also we got to see, and we will see far ahead that what can be the repercussions of whatever is coming our way. Not just chat GPT, and chat GPT because it's so simple to use and it's right there. You know, everybody can use it. That's why it has become such a big hawa all of a sudden. But uh, the technology has been available for a long time. And uh, like uh, Dr. Gulshan and I was saying, three are there. Good. So how many in the audience I want to check with you, I think many people that are talking each other, how many people they know the full form of GPT? Can someone raise the hand? They will lucky draw for him. Anyway, so GPT stands for the generative pre-trained uh, transformer, transformer. So how many type of uh, GPT we can expect uh, in this year to 2023? Kapil. I did a lot of research on that. So, see, GT, uh, chat GTP is one of them because uh, it got a lot of, you know, traction. So now Google also started the yeah. GPT, yeah. right? So, uh, so there are so many things are coming up now these days. Uh, so there is a, one of the best tool in this space is available, zero GTP, right? Probably nobody heard about that because there was a controversy, then chat GTP got the advantage of it. So zero GPT is a world number one tool which is already available and built by the one of the student. So, uh, and other side is a lot of blockchain and AI tools are coming and they have uh, these kind of, you know, features available already. In, this is a rule engine, nothing else actually, which are having a lot of algorithm. And in a blockchain, this is a very popular term actually they are using, there is an engine which is available there, right? But now these days, so you will see a lot of, lot of startups will come and they will introduce yeah. the... Uh, reason is because uh, everyone is targeting to one of the domain. Let's say, uh, I give you the example of marketing and somebody is, uh, let's say, looking for a business expansion, right? So they will create these kind of cartridges and they will sell it. Yeah. So that is the future they are looking for. Somebody was telling uh, in what conference what uh, is online, they said yeah, at least 2023 will witness more than 100 GPTs. More than 100. So all GPTs may con convert into PPTs. 
<laughs> he said that, he said that as for him. So anyway, thank you very so, much, panelist. I just want to add one something? more point over yeah. here. See, we are talking about chat GPT, text based or whatever. But uh, at the same time, there are so many other variations which are existing. I could manipulate uh, pictures. I can generate videos. I can change your face. I can strip you. I can do so many things on my endpoint. Now, who will be responsible for that? I can take this picture over here and remove everybody's face and just keep a table over here and say, aap, aap bol rahe so admi koi bhi nahi Yes, you're right. So, this is available right now. We're talking about chat GPT today. What about deep fake, which was there, brought in much earlier, where I could, uh, which has happened, of course. We have uh, the examples of Barack Obama's speech being changed and whatever. But we also have uh, lawsuits which are there where uh, celebrities have been, you know, shown in uh, compromising positions. So, this is another very big, dangerous thing coming our way. True. And uh, we say that our is not open. अभी 360 डिग्री होने वाला है 360 होना चाहिए लेकिन हम तो अभी सिर्फ यू नो नैरो विजन है हमारा तो चलिए वी जस्ट स्टिल देयर दैट यस दिस इज देयर वो हवा आ गया हवा साहब जो बोल रहे थे ना जवाब कौन देगा आई थिंक विजय सेठी साहब को पूछेंगे जवाब बताइए सर सेठी साहब जवाब देंगे ओके हाउ मेनी चैट हाउ मेनी न्यू जीपीटीज वुड कम इन Okay, let me just put it this way. When Bitcoin came in, we thought there'll be only two cryptocurrencies. There are today there are thousands and thousands. Thousands of, of Bitcoin. Okay. Same thing would happen that uh, there'll be hundreds and hundreds of uh, AI-based tools. Yes. So this is one name that has come across and has become popular. But what I expect is that over next uh, few months, we'll see hundreds such variations. Yes. Navin, you want to add something? Yeah. yeah. With quantum computing already, uh, you know, knocking our doors, I, do, I don't know why, why we need to worry about AI-based. Uh, if there is an AI-based tool to help us in any way, I think Kapil Ji has done his research very well on that. Uh, but there are going to be other, uh, you know, counter tools also to probably take care of, uh, you know, uh, if the tools are used for uh, mischievous purposes, this will actually be their tools to probably bring the right guidance. Right? Like zero GPT yeah. is a classic example to it. Right? So yeah, 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 Naveen, uh, I'd, I'd like to add it. Uh, the deep fake, what we are talking, so there is a website, it's a very official website, which allows it any video, whenever you found a compromise, you go on a website and it will be tell you whether it is created or not created, right? Uh, so, which is available because in one of the case I was involved and engaged in where police wanted to basically find out this tool, uh, sorry, this video of this girl is uh, really morphed or not morphed. So we have given the insight and written insight to the police, this is morphed. On the basis of that, they asked to Google to basically remove that and then register the FIR. And we got the source also because that site is a very good site, I mean, that tells you which source has been created and from where it is loaded as well. Yeah, every tool keeps uh, its digital print somewhere. Exactly. If you are on the internet, I mean, digital dust will be there, definitely. But, but sir, if you are not on the internet, and if you need evidence to prove it to the court, then you need somebody from India. So please come to Mumbai, go to VJTI, they have a tool which is the same thing. So, no, it's a, it's a tool which is about two years, two and a half years old or so. And uh, it's not been publicized as such. BJTI, you can go and uh, you will be able to get the tool from them, free of cost, and run it. And wherever, whichever department wants to do it. Wonderful, sir. So, we had a very good interaction and our panelists are very super experienced, uh, more than around 25 to 30 years of experience. Uh, and they have shared uh, very good inputs on the questions we have discussed. So, thank you very much for joining the panel.